I want to talk about five daily routines that you can do to help with your anxiety or with your depression. Five daily. So the, the idea is you do these things every day. It's hard. Everything that you do that's good in life is going to be hard. These are going to be even more hard because if you're already depressed, if you are anxious or have some other mental health issues going on in your life, you're not going to be motivated. You're not going to want to do these things. But this is where I want to encourage you. You have to get past the, the, the want or not wanting to do it. You have to work through it. All good things come through work. And so there are five things that I want you to do every single day to help either with your anxiety or with your depression. And it's important that you do these five things every day. They're not, they're not rocket science. They're not some magic formula. There's, it's not a magic pill, but it's hard work, just like anything good in life. You have to put work into this. You have to put work into yourself. Invest into yourself, into your mental health. So the five things that I really want to encourage you, and I'm going to uh, create a series on each of these five things coming up. But right now, this is just an overview of the five daily things to help you improve your mental well-being. Number one, number one is healthy diet, your nutrition. Stop eating all the carbs. Stop going to the fast food restaurants. Stop getting things that are quick and easy to make because usually the quicker they are to make, the more convenient they are to make, the less healthy they are for you. And if you're struggling with emotionally or with your moods, eating a bunch of carbs and fatty trans fats, that's the opposite thing you should be doing. So number one, daily work on your nutrition. Number two, work on your hydration. How much water are you actually getting? Are you drinking enough water? And I bet, I bet most of you who are watching this are not getting enough water. How much is enough water? Well, most professionals, most uh, people will say at least 64 ounces of water. So you need to figure out how, whatever, whatever water bottle that you use, you're going to have to figure out how much is 64 ounces or you get a 64 ounce water bottle. And that's what you really should be drinking. Number three, number three is health or not health, but sleeping, healthy sleeping habits. That is what I wanted to say. Healthy sleeping habits. How much sleep are you getting? Are you getting enough? Again, I think probably not. Most of you are not getting enough sleep. In fact, I think I've seen people celebrate or brag that they're working too much and they're not getting enough sleep. And, and that's the opposite. That's not going to help you. Uh, so how much is enough sleep? Well, it depends on your age. It depends on a lot of different factors. But if you're a teenager or a preteen, you're going to need a lot more sleep than probably an, an adult will. Uh, so preteen teens, I, I would really would recommend at least nine hours. Adults, uh, seven to eight, and the older you get, typically uh, the less sleep. So maybe six or seven, hours, probably seven hours is probably the sweet spot. But it's consistent sleep. It is a uh, uh, enough sleep, a healthy sleep through the night. It's not waking up and going to sleep. And I, I, I get it. I understand that some of you or a lot of you probably have some sleeping issues going on. Uh, and that's a different thing. That's a different topic for a different time. So number four, number four, are you getting enough exercise? Again, probably not. You have to get exercise, even if it's just going for a walk. You have to do this every day. And I, I get it. So there could be expense associated with a, a, a gym membership. Maybe you can't afford it. Uh, maybe you don't have a bike. You don't have good weather, whatever. There's lots of different reasons why we can make excuses for not getting exercise. But really, you can find the time, can't you? Even if it's terrible outside, you can do something inside. Be active. So I want you to figure out whatever it is, whatever type of exercise. It could be walking, it could be push-ups, could be whatever. Active. But I want you to do it consistently for 30 minutes, at least 
30 to 45 minutes every day. That's my recommendation. Maybe you get a Fitbit and, or one of those tracking devices and you do a lot of walking in your day. Great. Do that every single day. And then the fifth one uh, that I want you to really work on this. This perhaps is probably the hardest of all of the, of the ones that I've talked about. If you're depressed or have uh, some uh, really affecting your mood, and that is maintaining healthy relationships. You have to be with people. You have to. You can't do this by yourself. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know that you're thinking, if I'm depressed, the last thing I want to do is be with people. I get it. Or if I'm anxious, perhaps you have social anxiety and you don't want to be with people. I get it. But here's the thing. If you, if you struggle with some type of mental health issue, you're not going to want to be with other people, but it's exactly what you need. You need people in your life. It may not be uh, someone talking to you about what you should be doing or what you shouldn't be doing, but it's just spending time together. Being together, even if it's in your apartment or in your home and just sitting down and, and uh, that person is coming to visit you, you've got to have some social interaction. It doesn't have to be a large group. It could be one person. It could be a phone call, but it has to be maintaining a healthy relationship. Don't keep people away. That's what you're probably going to want to do. You're going to want to just keep people away. Stay away from me. I don't want to be around people. But what happens that when you're by yourself and you're struggling emotionally, isolation starts to come in and it makes it worse. So you need somebody in your life. So those are the five things, the daily things that I want you to work on if you want to improve on your health. This is an investment. Your emotional and mental health is an investment just like anything in the bank. You have to work at it and you have to work hard. You have to be willing to put in the effort, even when you don't feel like it. That's the key to getting better. Now, all, if you do all these things every day, is that going to be a magic solution? No, it's different for everybody, but you've got to start with these five things. Start with them and keep working at it. Work, 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 put forth the effort, remind yourself, write notes to remind yourself to keep going. And I want to challenge you to do these five things for 30 days in a row. And if you're not feeling better after doing it every single day for 30 days, then I want you to let me know. And I want you to maybe reach out to help, maybe a professional, a therapist. But will you do these things for 30 days? I hope so. And I think you're gonna feel better. I think this is really, really, really gonna help you. It's not rocket science, but it's hard. It's hard when you don't feel like it. But I want to encourage you to continue working on your emotional health because that is what's important. You've got to work on it. Your quality of living is extremely important and don't exclude people in your life. Okay? Try that. Those five things. Watch this over and over and over again to motivate you and to remind you and to encourage you. I hope you can do that. Well, thank you for watching, and I want to uh, really encourage you to follow through what I said here. Until next time, I really want you to work through these. And like I said, I'm going to be doing some individual videos on each of these categories that I talked about. Okay? All right. Take care, my friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye.